during the during the course of the various activities of the Columbia protests, we have been lucky, lucky to be graced with the likes of our new favorite activist, Johanna or Johanna, I'm giving it a Germanic thing, King Slutsky, who took it upon herself to speak before the throngs of media types to explain the particular the 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 ravages of the suffering that her fellow compatriots were experiencing keep in mind the horrors of leningrad and battle of the bulge and just any any moment of historical tumult but king slutsky uh, uh, provides the following in her Columbia work. Uh, and I found this. This is her biography. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to read this first. Before we go into the uh, particular story, she says, my dissertation is on fantasies of limitless energy in the transatlantic romantic imagination from 1760 to 1860. My goal is to write a prehistory of metabolic rift, Marx's term for the disruption of energy circuits caused by industrialization under capitalism. I am particularly interested in theories of the imagination and poetry as interpreted through a Marxian lens in order to update and propose an alternative to historicist ideological critiques of the romantic imagination. Prior to joining Columbia, I worked as a political strategist for leftist and progressive causes and remain active in the higher education labor movement. Now, in speaking before the world, the spokesperson came before Ms. King Slutsky, and spoke anent and regarding the particular causes of concern that she made the world aware of. And in this moment, reduced, reduced her particular cause to what amounts to that of laughing stock status. Let's look carefully at what she did, how she did it, and for reasons that will become readily apparent. Why should the university be steps? obligated to provide food to people who have taken over a building? The question is, of course, what form of obligation should Columbia University have towards and regarding people who basically, through violence or force, commandeered Columbia property? Uh, well, for, first of all, we're saying that they're obligated to provide food to students who pay for a meal plan here. No. This is, you can't make this up. You can't make this up. A meal plan, maybe a little card where they, everybody would punch those little holes in it. Your meal plan, ooh, burrito night. Probably, I would venture to say it, I've never read it, but probably I think excludes as almost a, a force majeure or act of providence in a way making impossibility, perhaps a defense, but in any way disenabling the provisions of a food plan, namely that of riotous, riotous uh, capture of university property. But you mentioned that there was a request to, that food and water be brought in, unless I misunderstood. To allow it to be brought in. I mean, well, I guess it's all. Now, now she wants food and water to be brought in. The meal plan was apparently interrupted at least by virtue of the of the riot or excuse me the protest now food and water are not able to be brought in are they not able to leave are they themselves in i don't want to compare it to gaza that would be but but is that what you are saying ultimately a question of what kind of community and obligation columbia feels it has to its students what 
obligation Columbia has towards its students who repeatedly defied lawful legal orders to not obstruct, destroy, impede, or in any way um, interrupt others' rights, who, by the way, also have a meal plan card and would like to have their meals and their provisions that they contracted for honored whilst uh, Nelson Mandela here uh, tries to articulate the obvious. Um, do you want students to die of dehydration and starvation? or Do you want students to die of dehydration and starvation? Now, I, again, I am not an expert in this. As far as starvation goes, you know, there's a big trend now on the internet. It's called intermittent fasting. And, and what we've learned is that you'd be surprised how far the body can go uh, whilst fasting. And some of these people would be, how do I say this? They could miss a meal or two, just saying. Get severely ill, even if they disagree with you. If the answer is no, then you should allow basic, I mean, it's crazy to say because we're on an Ivy League campus, but this is like basic humanitarian aid we're asking for. Like, like this is what, I mean, after all, this is an Ivy League campus. I mean, this is the Pomona State or Hillsborough Community College. This is an Ivy League. And and like, I must commend her. She doesn't, she she minimizes the likes. Uh, she's, uh, there's a certain kind of indignant tone, which I find fascinating. Say, Come on, this is, please. We don't want to dry, to desiccate, and certainly to starve to death in the, a day or and and I'm sure there are no water uh, facilities available. I'm 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 just I'm just I'm just reading into this. Could people please have a glass of water? A glass of water. Could you just? Would it be too much to ask for a glass of water? They, they, they water just pumps? put themselves in that very deliberately in that situation and in that position. You put yourself into this position deliberately. It's it's a very it's a it's a very valid and very interesting point. So it, it seems like you're sort of saying we want to be revolutionaries, we want to take up this building. Now would you please bring us food? Yes, we want to be revolutionaries, we want to commandeer and take over this building. Well, please, would you have perhaps a nice canopy or maybe a nice catered affair? Finger sandwiches, maybe some uh, Dunkin' Donuts, one of those coffee boxes might be nice, and some crullers. Water. Nobody's asking them to bring anything. Every, we're, we're asking them to not violently stop us from bringing in basic humanitarian. No, she said at first the meal plan was interrupted. And then she's shifting from nobody is bringing food in. So, so it, it, it's this, this expert spokesperson who wants to get into the, the hermeneutics and the heuristics of uh, the historicity of of Marxian circuit breaking um, has a hard time at least grasping the patent idiocy of what she's saying. They're stopping the delivery of food. I th we are looking for a commitment from them that they will not stop oh, it. By so now we want a commitment that they will not stop. Sounded before like they have stopped. And then before that, it was that the meal plan was interrupted. So you notice this. You notice how it's it's transitioning before our eyes. We, well, I don't. I'm not. I don't know to what extent it has been attempted, but we're. Looking. I don't know uh, how far and to what extent it's been attempted. However, if you would like to talk about a Hegelian interdenominational integrative, a. Uh, uh, perhaps a, a juxtaposition of a of a Marxian heuristic along the, with the historicist implications of a post uh, something or other. Looking for a commitment. <laughs> Later on, by the way, she said that she was uh, upset or offended by, I think there was some type of a grub hub uh, gift card or something that was meant to, as as some kind of uh, of, uh, of 
offer. Look, I don't want to be blatant about this. I don't want to 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 be in any way rude, but uh, uh, this is this this spokeswoman. Uh, I think is trying her best, but like many, have no idea of basically what they're talking about. And I know it's easy to say, oh, you know, they're full of shit. They don't know what they're talking about. Yes, yes, that 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 would be easy. And and I think probably most apt and most pertinent. But this goes to show you that as the as they are talking about the most horrific of living conditions imaginable and absolute a deconstruction of humanity in Gaza. Horrors that are beyond the realm of our understanding. Here she is talking about water and a glass of water, perhaps an, a meal plan voucher that has been interrupted while these determined revolutionaries or whoever they are fight for some kind of cause. And what's interesting was that, you know, in her heart, she thought, I'm really good at this. I'm, I, I know what I'm talking about. I'm smarter than you. After all, this is an Ivy league school. I'm a part of this Ivy league group and I'm an expert. In fact, in her LinkedIn or something, she says she was an expert in something or other. I mean, she really, and and, and imagine the, the, the look of her, or maybe not. Maybe the people standing behind her didn't realize, oh my God, this is our spokesperson? This, this is the what? I don't even think they noticed it. Because as you know, with most things, the theater and the stagecraft of the event sometimes is more important than the actual theory and the basis of the message of the event. That's all I want to say. At least it wasn't, at least she wasn't violent. My question is, what does she do to the overall sense of um, horror that is actually going on in Gaza as we speak? How has she imparted or explain to the world the, the basis for her protest as opposed to explaining the inconvenience she's going through and her fellow revolutionaries. We're not getting any water. We got the meal, but I, I did pay for the meal plan. It's, it's not being honored. Can we get some, maybe some, some, um, some Dunkin' Munchkins or perhaps maybe some box coffee, maybe a nice maybe bottled water or tap if you have it. Evian, if it's at all. Think about this. This is this is what she was up. This is what she was not demanding that the UN do this, not even demanding divestment or whatever it is she, she's wanting. No, it was about the meal planning. She wants her event to be catered. She wants the riot to be catered. I I I never thought I'd be hearing this. But then again, I never thought any of this would happen in the first place. What do you think, dear friends? Please subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. I think you know the routine. Tell me what you think and uh, comment. Comment as you see fit.